Um, so uh, my name is Chris Betcher. I'm the uh, program manager for G Suite Adoption on the Google for Education team. And uh, I'll be talking to you for the next little while just about the Google Teacher Center. Uh, and um, I uh, just, uh, bef by way of getting started, um, I uh, previously worked in a school. I was uh, on the ICT team at uh, Presbyterian Ladies College at Sydney for about eight years um, and, and developed quite a good association with the mighty uh, group through there. Um, one of the things we wondered as a school was, you know, we used a lot of Google stuff, but it was always like Google's this mysterious thing that sort of lives out in the cloud and, and there's no real people there and there's no real resources there. And I was really pleased one day when I realised that there are actually people in the Google for Education team and they can actually try and be helpful. Uh, and there are a ton of resources for, for teachers as well. Uh, and so the Google Teacher Centre is, in fact, our um, aggregation point for everything education from a teaching perspective. And so I want to take you through that today and just show you what's in there, give you a little bit of an oversight about some of our programs that we run for schools, um, which are always being improved uh, and extended upon. So uh, none of this is ever static. But uh, let's talk about what we've got. So uh, you can visit the Google Teacher Centre. And I always say the easiest way to find the Teacher Centre is just to Google Google Teacher Centre. But um, uh, there is an address for it, which I'll give you in just a sec. The, you know, the thing is, just by way of introduction, I saw this statement, you know, in your school, nobody wants technology usage. You know, the goal is not technology usage because technology by itself doesn't equal innovation. It's actually what technology can do to empower that whole ecosystem. And, you know, if you're working in uh, in this, uh, if, if you're part of Mighty, you're probably more than well aware that, you know, this idea of technology in schools, there's many, many components. There's the, you know, the, the, the actual technical part, the administration part and how to enhance learning and all that sort of stuff. But there's also the boosting teacher capacity. Uh, and really the stuff that we're talking about in the Google Teacher Center is really focused on that component of how do we boost the capabilities and the capacity of teachers to be able to use the technology to do things that are worth doing. You know, this quote, the technology can be a powerful tool, but it alone is not transformative. You know, just sticking computers and Chromebooks and devices and tablets, whatever, into schools is not going to change things. It's what you do with them. And that's, you know, should be self-evident, but um, sometimes it's not. Um, so there, I guess there's three aspects that we talk about on the Google for Education team, and that is um, access, adoption, and transformation. And so just briefly, that, that access piece, uh, where it's all about providing, uh, so providing affordable and effective tools and devices so the students and teachers can access technology. Um, while I just said a second ago, it's not just about the technology, obviously you can't do much unless you've got the technology. So how do you get the technology into students' hands? Well, um, there's lots of great solutions for getting technology into the hands of students. The ones that we work with at Google are these things called Chromebooks. Um, I'm not sure how many of you are using Chromebooks in your schools. I know I know from some of your names, some of you are, uh, but you may not all be. So this Google for Education phrase that you, you hear bandied around really encompasses three aspects. One is um, uh, G Suite for Education. And G Suite is you know, Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Sheets, Google Drawings, Google Forms, Google Sites, Google Maps, uh, well, not so much Google Maps, but um, th this whole suite of tools for, uh, for uh, education that Google make. And then there's this sort of special one called Google Classroom, which exists very specifically in the education space. It was designed for schools specifically. Uh, the rest of the suite is used across enterprise and not just in education. Classroom very specifically is education. And then, of course, there's Chromebooks, which is the hardware solution. And Chromebooks, uh, I mean, I'm presenting to you today from a Chromebook. They're, they're just like a regular computer with a simplified operating system, lightweight, highly secure, um, less expensive and more affordable than a typical uh, conventional PC. And so that's, that's part of our strategy about how we get technology into the hands of students by providing affordable devices and providing G Suite to schools at no cost. Um, assuming that layer is in place and that students then have access to technology of some sort, the next phase is then how do you get them to adopt it? How do you, how do you get teachers to understand how to use the technology effectively uh, and adopt it really well so that good things happen in the classroom? And that's where our teacher centre comes in. 
So the address is there, edu.google.com slash teacher dash centre. Uh, if you want to pop over there and have a look at it, I will, in fact, I will just do that now and just pop over here. If you go to that address, this is what you will see. This is the teacher centre. You can see uh, it's composed of a number of sections here. There's some training courses, some product guides, certifications, programs, resources, and communities. Uh, and I just want to take you through those. So I'll just scroll down through here and just give you a little sneak peek about what this looks like. Okay, so it's basically aggregating all of the resources of Google for education into one place. Let me just switch back to my slides. Okay. Um, now, uh, just to take you through some of the sort of, I think, the key programs that we offer through the Teacher Center. Uh, and the first is training. And we, we offer a number of training modules for teachers. So people who are using G Suite regularly or are very, fairly new to G Suite, we've had a lot of people coming onto the G Suite platform uh, over this last few months. Um, I think well, everyone's seeing a greater adoption of technology in general. Uh, I, know, uh, I know we've seen a huge uptake in the number of teachers using, uh, using not just, well, our tools, obviously, but uh, technology in general. Um, one of the things we offer first is what we call a fundamentals course. So it's a learn the basics of G Suite for education. And you'll notice in the corner here, there's a little yellow badge thing here. This is called a level one certification. And the idea is that this particular training course, which is free, interactive, online course, and it's designed for people who are fairly new to G Suite and want to learn the basics really well. And it leads to a certification called level one. Okay, so that's the first thing to note. And you'll find that in the teaching center. If I just flip back over to this tab again, you'll find that over here in um, 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 training courses. So if I click on training courses here and that page will load and you'll see there is the course here for new learners, learn the basics of G Suite for education. It's actually nearly 13 hours of training. Uh, if you take it slowly, you can actually do it a little quicker than that. You can do it quite a lot quicker than that if you kind of um, read fast or do the activities quickly. So that's an outside estimate. And there are 13 units of training in there. And you simply click the training link here and uh, it will actually keep track of which modules you've done so you know what to come back to and so on. There's also over here this other one on the other side here, this go further. And this is what we would call our, our advanced training. I, again, just go back to my slides. Um, so uh, here you go. So that was the fundamentals. This is the advanced training. So the advanced training is designed for teachers who want to, they, they've learned the basics and they want to know what next. Okay, so they go further with advanced training. And this one actually leads to what we call a level two certification if a teacher chooses to do the certification. So that's the basic idea. There, there are two main courses that are in there, the, the fundamentals and the advanced, and they lead to the level one and the level two certifications. Um, some of the other things that are going on in the teacher centre, uh, if you're brand new to G Suite or you have teachers who are brand new to it and they've never used it before, they are literally at the zero starting point, um, this is a great resource for them. It's called the Getting Started series. Uh, and what happens is with this one is a teacher can sign up for this using an email address and then they will get an email once a week for eight weeks with each week having a short, very succinct and direct and to the point lesson in an aspect of G Suite. So the first week might be docs and the next one might be slides. I can't remember the order they come in, but each week will be a different lesson. So classroom, um, uh, sheets, docs, uh, and there's eight of them. Uh, sites is one, another one. And so th they will arrive every week in the teacher's inbox. Uh, there's a short uh, set of videos there, very short videos. Some of them are like 30 seconds. And the idea is that there is less than 15 minutes required to deal with this every week. And a lot of them are around eight or nine minutes. So for brand new teachers, I think this is a great, simple introduction to G Suite. And again, if I just flip over to the uh, to the actual web page, underneath the this on the training page here, you'll see here it is here, getting started, learn the basics of G Suite. If a teacher clicks this link, it will open another page that looks like this, getting started. And all I need to do is fill in this form and they'll get one email every week for eight weeks. Okay, and it'll take them through. Uh, so that's, a, I think, a really good introduction for a lot of teachers who are sort of just getting started with this stuff. Uh, go back to my slides. There you go. Okay. So um, then we've got some product guides. So there are some teachers who are 
you know, they, they've got the basics under their belt. Now they want to deep dive into something. They're doing a unit of work on, you know, they need to know more about Classroom or they, they're doing something with Google Forms and they need to know more about that. So there are some product guides on the site. Uh, and each of these will take you through a deep dive into a particular product. And again, oh, let me just switch over to the live site. And I'll go to the product guides page here. And you can see here are all the product guides listed. So let's say you have a teacher who's never used Google Classroom before and they really want to get up to speed with it. They can come in here, go to the product guides, go to Classroom. And here it is, getting started with Google Classroom. There's a video to watch. And there's a whole series of videos here that you click on the side here and it'll swap out the video on the other side. And so, um, you know, how to get started, how to add students, how to view the classwork page, how to create assignments. It's all there, right, with video training. It's all free. And then underneath here, what we call the Teacher's Lounge, there's, a, there's other uh, resources here. And these have all been created by actual classroom teachers. So, you know, the top material up here on the page, Google makes the stuff down here in the Teacher's Lounge. This is contributions from the teaching community. So teachers talking to teachers. And so I think there's, there's, for, each, for each of our tools uh, in the product guides list here, there's a similar kind of arrangement there. So lots and lots of resources for teachers to get started. Uh, let's go back to our slides. Okay, so that's the product guides. Um, and then I mentioned before we had the fundamentals and the advanced training. There's actually a whole lot of other training as well. So there's Chromebook training. There's a We run a digital citizenship and safety course. Uh, we've just recently put together a distance learning or remote learning course. Uh, there's a there's a course for teaching coding with um, CS First. That's our, um, our STEM computer science uh, program. Um, our applied digital skills program. Some of you might be old enough to remember there used to be a thing called the, uh, the, the ICDL, the International Computer Driver's License, which was like a series of activities and lessons that students could do to learn to become competent. Well, I guess this is the sort of our modern equivalent of this, the, the Applied Digital Skills course. It's a series of lessons and programs and activities that students can do to, um, to get project ideas for how to interact with, um, with our tools. That's really useful for teachers who are, you know, they may be, they've been told they need to integrate technology. They're not quite sure where to start. The Applied Digital Skills course will give them pre-packaged lessons, not in how to use the tool, but in how to achieve an outcome using the tool. And that's a really important difference. Um, we've got a course here on tools for diverse learners, which focuses on accessibility and, um, uh, and, and uh, sort of differentiating with, with our tools. And there's also an English language learning support course as well. So lots and lots of training courses there. And again, I'll just go back to the live site and show you, you'll find those under training courses. And if I just scroll down uh, here, you'll see here's the distance learning course right here. Here's the Chromebook training course. Uh, there's more. Here's the digital citizenship course, the accessibility course, the English language course. So all of those things are available just right there under the training tab, training courses tab right there. Okay. So back to here, back to the slides. Um one of the most disconcerting things about presenting in a webinar like this is I feel like I'm just talking to my screen and I know there are people out there. I know you guys are there, but feel free to pop some questions in the chat or even unmute. We're a fairly small group today, so um, more than happy for you to unmute and uh, fire up a conversation. Now, I mentioned before that that level one and level, sorry, the fundamentals and the advanced training courses can lead on to certifications. Now, if I'm a teacher and I've done a whole bunch of training, Maybe it's just me, but I want to get recognized for that. I want some sort of acknowledgement at the end that I've learned something. And so we offer a level one and level two certification that are mapped to the fundamentals and the advanced course. And a teacher, if they choose to, it's not compulsory, but they can sit for a an exam, which then validates their skill in those things that they've learned so that they can then claim this badge, this level one or level two badge. Now, the way that works, um, there is a charge for doing this. It's $10 or $25. And they are in US dollars, by the way. Um, so you will actually buy a voucher and then you can sit for this exam. Uh, it is a three-hour exam. It generally, if you know what you're doing, doesn't take anywhere near three hours to actually do, but you've got a three-hour window to do it in. Uh, and um, by sitting that exam... Uh, it will actually fire up a live instance of G Suite for you uh, that we run up 
a, like a virtual instance of, of G Suite, which you can then log into and you're asked to perform a series of tasks. So it's not, I think level one does still have a few multiple choice questions in there just to get started. But the majority of the exam is actual performance tasks where it's asking you to open this document and um, you know, rename the file and move it to a different folder and then open this slides file and change the font and add this image and blah, blah, blah. So it's, it's actual tasks that are the real kind of tasks that people will do in the real world. Uh, if, it, if you pass that exam, you get acknowledged as a level one or level two educator, depending which one you've done. Um, they're propped online. They can be taken anytime, anywhere. Um, we have... Uh, currently in Australia, New Zealand at the moment, I think we've had just over a thousand teachers uh, get certified this year. Uh, and so I think we're tracking towards getting quite a few thousand by the end of the year. All right. Um, we also, believe it or not, we have a G Suite certification for students as well. Uh, and this one is actually, I'll put the little cloud logo there because this one is actually not run by the Google for Education team. This is actually run by Google Cloud. So this is a very legitimate professional certification that's recognized out in the real world. The level one and level two certs that I mentioned before are pretty much focused on education and teachers. This certification is focused on, um, quote, the real, I hate the term, but, you know, the real world. Um, and uh, it is something you, uh, that a, a person, uh, be it an adult or a student, can take out with them when they go applying for jobs or putting it on their resume, and it is a recognized certification. Um there are an increasing number of organizations outside of education that use G Suite as their main platform. Um, some really, uh, uh, Richard, you're still in the chat here. You might be able to mention a few, but I mean, Woolworths always comes to mind as a great example. Um, the uh, the New Service New South Wales is another one. So there's another, there's a lot of really big organizations that use G Suite as their platform. And I think, you know, the argument that I sometimes hear people say, well, well, you know, Google's good in schools, but when the kids leave school, you know, nobody actually uses G Suite in the real world. That's absolutely not true. Um, there's lots of large organizations that do. And I would say the majority of um, newer, more agile, uh, startup, entrepreneurial type of companies pretty much all run on G Suite. So being able to leave school with a certification that's fully recognized in the real world, I think is a really powerful thing for students to have. Um, and uh, uh, let me just go over to the live site again. I'll just show you where all this lives. So you'll find all this over on the certifications tab here. So you've got an overview of what certifications are, the level one, the level two, and the G Suite certification here, the, uh, the industry standard one there. So that's where you'll find all the certification stuff. If I just click on any of those, it will open up and say, so here's, here's the link here. Here's how you register for an exam. Um, if you have a voucher already, you can click on that and just put the voucher number in and it'll take you through. But this page will explain everything you need to know about actually sitting for that exam and getting that certification. Oh, that was going fast. Um, all right, so that's uh, the certification for students. Oh, can you tell I live near a police station? <laughs> Um, some of the other things you'll find in the uh, in the site. So I just check what time we need to take this session to. Uh, okay, another seven minutes. Good, good. Um, is Google Educator Groups. So um, we have uh, these communities that we develop, and these are not really run by Google, but I suppose they're supported by Google. Uh, these are teachers who take it upon themselves to create communities within their own local areas that... Um, uh, they're almost like teach meet style groups that they get together once a term, sometimes more often, sometimes less often, and they run sort of teach meet style events. They can be online, they can be face to face, they can be down the local pub, they can be in a school after school. All GEGs operate slightly differently, uh, just depends on the people running them. But the idea is that it's teachers sharing ideas with other teachers. And although they're called Google Educator Groups, they don't have to be focused entirely on Google. In fact, we're we're toying around with some potential other names for these at the moment that I guess I can't really talk about. But, um, you know, the, the concept is is creating communities for teachers to be able to share ideas with each other. Uh, if I pop back over to the site again, I hope this is working, this going back and forward between the slides and the site. Uh, I can go to the communities tab here and you'll see this takes me to the uh, Google Educator Group page. And you can actually find a group near you. And so right now, this is the uh, world map, which hopefully, there you go. So these blue dots represent 
um, clusters of Google Educator groups all around the world. <laughs> and uh, if I just click on the Australia, for example, you can see we've got one in Adelaide, Braidwood, Canberra, Central Queensland, Lakes Entrance, Melbourne, Mornington Peninsula, Central Coast, Mid-North Coast, Wagga, and Western Sydney. And so... Um, uh, there's 11 groups in Australia at the moment, and uh, we, we always, you know, anyone who wants to start one, there is a process to do that, but it's pretty simple. Uh, and so, we, you know, we'd love to open more of them in more and more regions to support local educators. So that's the Google Educator Group uh, thing that I want to tell you about. So, uh, right, so there's that. Other things, uh, the App Hub. One of the questions we used to get a lot from teachers, especially teachers who were using Chromebooks, was... What applications can I use on my Chromebook? What can I actually do on my Chromebook? And once once I know what tools I can have on my Chromebook, what can I actually do with those tools? How do I teach with them? And so we started this site called the App Hub. And the address is just there, g.co slash Chromebook App Hub. And um, what it is, it's a, a directory where you can look up either information about Chrome applications that run on a Chromebook or teaching ideas for how to teach with them on a Chromebook as well. So there's lots and lots of great resources there. If you're a developer, this is also the place you'd go to get information about how to get listed in this directory as well. Uh, we've had a number of um, uh, companies that make third-party products uh, come to us and say, how do we get in this directory? And so we've taken them through the process. They're in there now. But the neat thing about getting into this directory, you have to meet fairly high standards uh, in terms of privacy, security, uh, like uh, stability, all the things that make an app worth having. Those are all vetted and checked before anyone is allowed to go into this directory. So uh, Morris was talking before about the NSIP um, initiative. Uh, I'm not 100% sure this is, uh, Rich would probably know, where this aligns in terms of the NSIP standards because those are still developing. But um, this is our attempt at trying to make sure that if you're looking for applications for your Chromebook, they've at least been vetted for you know, the important stuff to make sure that they're, they're decent apps. So that's the App Hub. Um, once someone goes beyond the level one and level two certification, if they're working in a situation where they're training other teachers, uh, we also have a certification for trainers as well. Uh, and so if, if your role is to work with other teachers, uh, maybe you present at conferences, maybe you uh, run third party workshops, external workshops to the school or even within the school, uh, we run these, uh, this course called the Google Certified Trainer course. Uh, and, and certification where you can apply to be recognized and validated and, and certified as a trainer. Uh, and again, all the all the advantages that come with certification, and which is mainly around recognition and, and validation of those skills. So there's a certified trainer course. We have just recently introduced a new course called Certified Coach. There's a subtle difference between being a trainer and being a coach. And I guess I'd sum it up as saying that if you're a trainer, you're normally training one person to many people. Uh, much like we're doing today. Um, but if you're a coach, you typically would work inside a school and you'd be working more one-on-one -on -one with individual teachers over a longer period of time. So maybe co-planning with them, um, uh, you know, working on projects together, following through, uh, which is a little bit different to a training role where typically you come in, train a bunch of people that you may or may not ever see again, right? Um, and so there's these two programs that work with that. The coach program fairly new just recently introduced uh like a couple of months ago um and uh it's a one-year program of mentorship to take you through becoming a good coach okay uh and if you if you know anyone that works in the ict integration field or the tech integration field this is probably the course for them um so you might want to let them know about it and the sort of the the overarching uh, certification that we offer is a thing called Google Certified Innovators. Uh, many years ago, it was called the Google Certified Teacher Program. Uh, it's now Google Certified Innovators. And it is a program for teachers and people working within the education space that want to create meaningful, long-lasting change and innovation. Um, and so this is a program that is run uh, in different parts of the world at different times. Um, this year, we had to move it to an online format for the first time, and it only just kicked off this week. Um, but it's a it's a fairly, I hate the word exclusive, but it is, there are limited places available to get into this program, and we have lots of people apply, and we can only take a certain number of people. And so I guess it is a little bit um, 
you know, one of these one, one of these programs that if you get into it, you, you, you know, you're doing okay. Um, so that's the Innovator Program. We'll talk more about that. Uh, we work with development, professional development partners as well, training organizations that can, um, you know, if, if you need someone to come to your school and train in Google stuff, uh, we don't really do that. We build the tools. We we let other people do the training on them because that's where they specialize in. So there are a couple of organizations in Australia that uh, really are very good at training if you need someone to come in. Um, Deploy Learning based in Melbourne and uh, uh, using technology better based in um, in Queenstown in New Zealand. Uh, uh, the two professional development partners that we would recommend for Australia and New Zealand. Uh, and I see we've run out of time, so I do have a couple of other slides, but I am going to just skip through them uh, and just finish up with this one. Look, guys, if this has been uh, informative and useful to you, uh, I would really much appreciate if you could just pop into that link there, bit.ly slash Google Mighty. There's a little quick feedback form there. Uh, if you could just take a moment and just fill that in, I'd really appreciate it.